Hi, Felipe. How are you? Hi, Shan. Uh, uh, first of all, Felipe, just your reaction to the game being cancelled on Friday and how much of an advantage do you think will be going in fresh to Saturday's quarterfinal? Um, no, obviously, it was my, my, um, it was a, a bit of frustration, you know, because we were well prepped, we wanted to play, it was a very late call and, and so on, you know, but as we said, we can control, it's, it's out of our control, those decisions, you know, we just can control what we can control is trying to, to keep our bubble as, as safe as possible with, with, with no COVID or trying not to get COVID. And, and I feel sorry for Toulon, you know, because it's, it's not the way, um, probably they were well prepped as well. And, and it was going, both teams, we were looking forward to play that game, you know. Um, but it is what it is. Now we are looking forward and, and it's, it's a big game um, this weekend. And um, I don't know if, if to call it an advantage, we'll see after the game if it was or not. I think it's, it's part of, um, you know, when, you, when they, they had it, they said it after the game, um, Rob Buster, what Baxter was saying that, you know, it took them a few minutes or a few uh, minutes to get into the game with some internationalists getting back to their mode and exeter mode well we're in the same boat you know like we we have a few guys coming although we played against monster but some of them uh, they are coming and getting to the leinster habits and so on after uh, eight weeks so yeah it's it's you could have see it the way that we haven't played and and they could be fresher but it's still a long, it, it's, it's still a, a, a normal week for them as well. So I don't think there will be much advantage there. Um, it's that cohesion that we need to get under our belts in training and trying to, to supply for, for that uh, match day cohesion, you know, that we didn't have because we didn't play. But it's, it's, it's what it is. We, we don't look back. We just look forward and, and we, 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 de we get on with, what, with the situation, you know. And just finally for me, can I just ask you about um, James Ryan and Caelan Doris? They're still out of concussion. How long more are they going to be out for? Oh, it's a good question. It's not, a, you know, we, we're not going to risk. I think it's, it's a very sensible um, case or, or cases, you know, in, in terms of when, when we talk about a, a, a head knock or a concussion or put the name you want, we, we, we don't take it lightly here. So. We will take. We'll give them the time they have to, and then we'll we'll get the adv advice of of experts and so on, and then we'll follow the the protocols and the and the time they need is is what they need. You know, it's it's going not day to day basis, but it's it's going like it, it takes time, and we'd rather get it wrong by giving them more time than giving them less time. You know, and that's the way it is. We all want to have them and have them playing, but this is a it's a serious matter in terms of of the way there's 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 not a lot of knowledge or, or things that are getting to know at the moment you know and, and and starting to get known so we just have to listen the the, the experts and, and and get with what their advice is and and just take them uh, sometimes even baby steps you know how they introduce themselves into training and so on and 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 it's a it's a how do you say a step step by step reintegration it's it's um it's like it's like a concussion you know the protocol the normal protocol but a bit longer so we we take we assess uh, that there's no further back step and so on and then but hopefully they are they are closer to get back to play you know Okay, so sorry, just quickly, I so you don't have a definite timeline yet on when they no. will be back. No, 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 we don't, and and we 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 are assessing them like in in terms of training. They are increasing their training with the team and so on. So it's it's like sometimes it's going back to the experts and 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 just getting their signed off and so on. You know. Hi, hi, Felipe. How are you? Good, good. Um, just wondering what with the mechanics of the, the cancellation, did you have any indication in the days beforehand that it, it was, there was a concern over it if they, if they had the, the negative test a couple of days before they travelled to Dublin or did you just find out on the day? No, as a, myself, 
as as a team we we were called like a few hours before the game we find out that uh, it was cancelled because of a, a positive case that they had uh, in the second testing uh, i don't know all the details perfectly you know and uh, but it's uh, the second the second day uh, of testing of the week they had a positive case then they travel but then there was a confusion of close contacts and so on and and that's where you know it's out of our control it's like a full expert of a committee and they they assess that it's it's not safe and and safety you know we're all making a huge effort everyone society is making a huge effort to to against this covid pandemic you know so um safety and and wealth uh, and, and health of of the players is is and and the staff and everyone is is the main the main thing so if they came up with that decision we have to take it you know and that's it you know what what can we do um, it's frustrating it was frustrating because we were ready to go <laughs> um, but but it's it's what it is and um, is it completely independent or did Leinster have any input into the talk of a match on Sunday or something like that? Is there any way maybe Leinster said we had some concerns over playing a match in those circumstances in case the same thing happens to Leinster next week that there was a positive case? No, no, I think the rules like, um, you know, e EPCR rules has been clear. Like if you can't feel the team, you're, you're knocked out and that's the way they've been making the rules that the thing here was the timing of 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 the decisions i think that's what it's been uh, confusing or criticized or whatever put the word you want but um we don't have much input in there the only thing we can do and I, I, as i said is the only thing that we can control at to a, and to a, a certain uh, stage is trying not to get covid into our bubble you know so and that's why we, we put it into perspective to our players, to our staff, uh, keep the bubbles as small as possible, as tight as possible, because the knock-on effect is huge, it's massive, you know. So um, we are making a huge effort, we've been making a huge effort for the last couple of months, not couple, for the last six, seven months till till rugby has been, has resumed. and. And um, luckily, we, we haven't had cases or we haven't had from our camp uh, cases that, that force us to, to forfeit a, a, a game. But we know it can happen and, and, and that's why we, we put it into perspective ourselves and we control as much as we can. And that's our behaviors. But um, then the decision is out of our control when something happens, you know. Thank you. Best of luck. Cheers. Hopefully, great. Uh, when, when, when you find out so late that a game is going to be cancelled, how does that change your preparation during the week? Do you need to do more contact training, for example, when you have a game in two weeks, or at the stage of the season, does it remain similar to how it always has been? No, no. It's uh, to to start with. Uh, the game was cancelled, but we didn't know which day and whom we were playing the following week, so we couldn't plan much either. You know, in terms of of days and so on the the way we we planned ourselves and maybe some other teams does it differently but we we don't change too much the way we train um uh, as we planned the week you know but we knew that by not playing uh, we can maybe push a bit harder uh, on a monday but but that's it and and it doesn't mean by contact it it means more in intensity we don't we, we we don't really train or lift up the intensity in terms of contact or much. You don't, as much as you try to resemble games, you don't get to a game intensity in training. And also because it's it's not worth it either. You know, you don't want to hit each other and, and put ourselves into a risk of an injury or something, you know. We know that game is a, it's a 10 out of 10 in terms of effort and, and, and physically. Uh, we never like we try to maximize it in intensity, but not in collisions or, or in in yeah collision or whatever you say in in, in um, uh, as a game, you know. And looking back on that monster game and some of the missed opportunities that would have frustrated you, 
How do you work on that from a coaching point of view? When a, a pass doesn't go behind in their game situation, how do you work on that during the week to make sure it doesn't happen again next weekend? Well, you keep you keep going, and it, first of all, you you assess them and you see them, and you 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 try to to understand why that happened. We know, and it's not an excuse; it's a reality, and we and and it happens all the times when you come back and you join two big two groups that been working differently because it's. Let's be honest; we had twenty guys in the Irish camp, you know, so they've been eight weeks, or not the twenty, but we have a fair big chunk of players eight weeks training differently and with different language and different so cohesion is a big big challenge on those weeks and we knew it was going to be a bit in not cohesive but um, we we just keep on on creating those habits and then developing those habits in training so that we can get them right you know and then uh, try to nail those opportunities and and when we are in in training not we don't take lightly if we don't finish an opportunity you know and that's the and that's the way you you do it uh, i think that's the way you you have to deal with it um it's what it is as i told you you know it's uh, luckily we we've got a result we we gave away too many opportunities but we got a a, a result a good result so it's easier to to work after a, a winning result, you know, uh, but we knew we 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 knew we we had to put a lot of work, and and that's why we were looking forward to playing uh, Toulon and get it right. And now it's it's Exeter, you know, and and that's that's the way it is. We keep on working on that cohesion and that bits in training to get it right, you know. Thanks, Felipe. Yeah. Don, Jerry, we've time for a question each. If you want to throw one in there. Hi, Felipe. Hi, Felipe. Um, just wondering, a team like Exeter, who are um, sort of a big unit, uh, big forwards, uh, uh, tricky enough to play against because they kind of play a pressure game where uh, they try and make the opposition uh, cough up mistakes and give away penalties. Is, is there a different uh, mindset going in to play a team like that? It, uh, compared to which team? Well, compared to some of the more uh, maybe expansive, uh, you know, uh, uh, teams like some of the French teams. Um, yeah, well, well, every team has the, their own uh, strength and and. I would say weaknesses as well, you know, the same as us. I, I'm pretty sure that teams that scout us, they, they try to find the weaknesses in Leinster and, and, and try to to get their strengths over our, our weaknesses. Uh, the way we, we, we see Exeter, we, we know they're a, a brilliant team. There's no, uh, they're not uh, double champions by chance, you know, they are because they've been uh, developing to the team they are and they've been through the rocky road uh, in the last 10 years and now they are the, the the team they are they are the champions of of the champions cup they are the champions of europe champions of premiership so they are an exceptional team you know and there's there's no big challenge bigger challenge for us than to go and and play the champions in their park you know but we we embrace that challenge and we know it's going to be it, it it will demand a hell of a of, of a performance from our side, but but that's you know that's what that competition is about. This competition is about you know uh, playing the best teams, um, and 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 that's it can't get bigger challenge. And the way we we prepare is is with that same mindset of it's a final. You win, you're through. You lose, you go home, and and you you have to wait for next year. So it, it's a final. It's it's like that. Okay, and um, just looking at the um, the ex Exeter uh, Leon game, um, they went behind by two, uh, two fourteen nil. They were down er early on in the game, and seemed to take them a while to settle into the game. I just wonder if, if Leinster coming in after and not playing this weekend, it may be slow to get get ahead of steam up. Is that a is that something that you think about? No, as I said, you know, we were 
we wanted to play. We wanted to put a, a, a performance and, and play against Toulon and, and probably win on the pitch and, and have more game time together. But it's what it is. We don't we don't work on ifs. We work on reality. It's what we have to deal with. And now we are working on that cohesion in, inside uh, in training so that we are ready to go from from the first minute because it will take uh, 80 minutes, not 60, not 20, not... Uh, you, you, if you want to beat Exeter, you have to be good from minute one to minute 80, you know, and there's no chance. You, 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 you stop one minute and they are a, a team that will take every single chance and they are relentless and they play really good rugby.